Retro Kev uh, back again finally um, with the follow up to the Spectrum video I did. You know, uh, people seem to really quite like the Spectrum video, and uh, I've got a lot of comments on that one. And you know what? There's some really, really uh, nice suggestions. You know, I can't claim to be some sort of expert on Spectrum games. I, I don't know all the games that came out. You know what? There was probably hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of games for the Spectrum. So in in amongst the comments, there, there was sort of some games that I thought, you know what, they sound interesting. I'm going to look into them and uh, pick some of them up. And you know, I managed to get some of them. Yeah, you know me, sort of. I get it as cheap as I could um uh, i've got them all through ebay but yeah they're sort of back here um the ones i bought specifically because of the comments were uh, colony feud hall of things uh and river raid uh the other two football manager i had back in the day i'd obviously got rid of it uh years ago but you know i bought that again because i remember that being a good game that was suggested and and airwolf oh killer airwolf you know tough game airwolf but I, I had airwolf about six months ago but that was suggested i also do um, stuff on facebook and somebody would, uh, suggested that um, there so i thought we'd um, do a little video on them i thought you know i'll have a look at the games i didn't play them for as long as i'd like to you know it's difficult uh, i'm a lorry driver for a living and uh, just finding the time with family life and everything to give the games as much time as i'd like it's difficult but you know i gave them long enough to understand i'll tell you some of you out there are zedic spectrum masochists because they're tough games Really are tough games. A couple of them, uh, you know, Hall of Things, tough. Uh, Colony, quite tough. But, you know, I'll give them a go. But I thought I'd do a little bit of um, a talk through uh, through those uh, games and, um, you know, tell you what I thought of them, the sort of uh, fun I had playing them. Yeah, so here we go. I'm going to start with uh, Colony, which is a good game, and uh, we'll go with that first. Okay. Now this game Colony, I really found this game intriguing, you know, it was just a really unusual premise. You're this little android and you're on this planet and you're protecting this uh, sort of farm almost with these uh, fields of mushrooms. And, you know, you have these warehouses around where you can pick up fencing because the fencing around the area gets damaged by these alien creatures or these uh, ants type creatures that are breaking their way in uh, to sort of eat your crops or destroy your crops. But the whole premise of the game was just really interesting. It almost felt like a, sort of an episode of Doctor Who, almost like the TARDIS was going to turn up and John Pertwee or Tom Baker with K-9 is going to turn up. It just felt like that, really unusual and really out there. You know, a lot of games at the time, like this time in the Spectrum World, they really had some unusual ideas, ideas that maybe people wouldn't be able to make now, you know. But I found it really, really uh, intriguing is the word. And I'll almost be certainly going back to play this game. You know, really, really good. Well, there you go. That was, well, there you go. That was uh, Colony, which I thought was a really interesting game. But uh, we'll crack on. And uh, on we go with Feud. Yeah, like Colony, this one took me a while to get into. But, you know, I did get into it. Um, you're sort of battling against another wizard. And uh, you sort of got to go around picking up plants and weeds and um, to make spells. You've got a sort of spell book. But the thing is, you can't just do any combination. You've got to find the right combination that's in your spell book. And then once you've got the right combination, you've got to make your way back to your sort of pot to make uh, your cauldron, as it was, to make the spell. But you know what? I'd find the flaming uh, right combination, but then I couldn't find my way back uh, to my cauldron pot to sort of make the spells. But oh, frustrating. But the thing is, you don't just die instantly when you come across the other wizard, which is good. So, you know, if you played it for days and weeks, you'd start to learn it well. But you know what? Oh, I started to sort of get into it. It's, it's a good game. So that was few day. Eh? Those wizards, they put their paces in walking around that place. But there you go, we'll go on with the next one, and the next one is uh, what I thought was a really good game, uh, Hall of Things, yeah, really good game. Oh no, this game was tough. Uh, you know, the idea of this game is you're searching for these rings, and it is so tough, the minute you get shot, pretty much, or you bump into an alien, you're dead. And there's, I think there's six or seven floors, and you have to go around the mazes, and the instructions to sort of, amount of keys you had to use to pick up things, drop things, go into a different mode, use a sword use your arrows oh and on the keyboard it was really difficult you know we're well trained now with uh, our consoles and controllers uh, easy to play and to move around but oh this was tough but it started to become so addictive to sort of make my way around these mazes and uh, and i just wanted to find a ring and I, I just couldn't even see a ring let alone find one but you know eventually as you'll see coming up i saw a ring and you know once you start to sort of think oh yeah i, I, I can do this 
it just became more addictive and you know there was the ring there you can see it on the left and i rushed to get it and died again you know but so frustrating but really really good to play yeah so that's all the things as i say you know uh, one game of the year that when it came out on one of the magazines so it's more than justified i thought it was a really good game right? you know but onwards we go and um, we'll go to uh airwolf the tough airwolf old string fellow hawk himself <laughs> Well, as I said, everybody knows how tough Airwolf is, and uh, there's old Stringfellow Hawk flying his superb helicopter around, but it's not as superb in this video game, you know, it's pretty fragile, and the second you, you hit something, or get hit, you know, you're dead, you know, they could never have uh, sort of uh, made the TV show uh, like this, because, you know, what Stringfellow and the guy who was with him and the helicopter would both be gone, <laughs> halfway through the first episode and they never would have made any more but yeah on the game side you know it is tough but you know it's really good graphics i thought you know colorful you know really playable as well obviously very very tough but you know i found this game really playable uh, back in the day and playing it again even though i'm a lot older and probably a lot worse at it you know i started to get into it again and you know it's one of those it's frustrating but you just want to get back and have another try but i think i found on youtube eventually i think there's a, a person who's completed it i think when you make your way down to the bottom of this canyon i think what happens is you you get to a certain point and then you have to come back again and <laughs> i think this guy said you have to do the whole procedure three times to complete the game i don't even think there's any sort of special reward i think the game just sort of starts again but you know I like playing Airwolf. I thought it was a well-designed game. You know, as I say, graphically interesting. You know, tough, of course. But, you know, every now and then I come back to Airwolf and just to sort of, you know, pit myself against one of the toughest games. I mean, it does make you realise that a lot of games now, that, you know, your hand is held to in a certain extent. Not in all games, but in a lot of games. I mean, this was just relentlessly tough. You know, if you could play Airwolf for a while, you know, you were getting somewhere with games. There you go, that was the iconically tough Airwolf, like, you know, I still enjoy playing it, even though it's that tough, but um, I'll go on again to another sort of quick sort of arcade type game, and that's River Raid, which is always a bit of a laugh to play, I found, and I thought it was good fun. Now this game was more sort of a straight in sort of arcade style, you know, it didn't have any huge strategy or anything, there wasn't really a massive objective other than to sort of destroy as many tanks, playing the ships as possible while keeping your fuel up and you know what i used to love games like this there was a lot of them on the spectrum and you know what these are the sort of games you used to get home from school load up play for five or ten minutes and you'd have a real good buzz you know i really enjoyed games like this and there was many on the spectrum really good stuff so that was a river raid uh, good fun that was river raid always good for a blast you can quickly play that 10 15 minutes have a bit of fun and then you can move on to something else uh, but yeah now on to the last one which is uh, kevin tom's football manager no, a bit of a classic. Yeah, and it is a classic, you know, because playing this game again now as um, a 54-year-old, you know, I realise what a great job Kevin's Toms did with this original. You know, it really is the prelude for all the football management games, you know, and they've been hugely successful football manager. You know, when it came out on the PC, you know, some years after the Spectrum, it really was a big selling game. And, you know, a lot of people really loved it. But, you know, you know, this game sort of started it for me. You know, and, and what you did with the budget and the players and stuff, you know, really sort of came through as to the results of your club. And and it was tough to sort of uh, get the balance right. And, you know, it was, and you know, back in the day, I remember watching the highlights thinking, come on, you know, I need my team to score. And, you know, I got into it. And sometimes you think, oh, is it going to go back up the other end of the highlights where there'd be a chance for your team to score? But, you know, I remember now playing this again. I'm really glad it was recommended. Uh, you know, to, to, to look at again, because I really enjoyed playing it again. And, you know, apparently, um, you know, Kevin Toms has, has got this game available on, on phones now. You know, I know it's available on Android. I don't know if it's on iPhone, but he's also on YouTube talking about the, the new version on the phones. But you know what? A lot of credit to him because, you know, it, it really was the start of something with this game. You know, games like Football Manager, you know, full credit to him. You know, it's great stuff. Yeah, so that was Kevin Tom's Football Manager. You know, it was a great game for its time. It really did things right. You know what? You weren't able just to put the strongest team out all the time and get the result. It was a bit like real football in that sense where, 
you know, uh, a result could be fairly unpredictable, but overall, it worked out the gist of what you were doing with the management stuff. And oh, it's pretty clever. And obviously a prelude to a lot of football management games now. And obviously they've got massively deep. And uh, I, I know people have lost years of their life playing those football management games. But that was like one of the, or probably the first one that sort of started that sort of thing. And very clever. But anyway, I've not suddenly turned into Mr. Ben. Got well, show me age there, but there you go. I'm sure some of you out there remember Mr. Ben. But I'll put this T-shirt on for a reason. And the reason is, a while back I said I was going to do a video on PlayStation 1 games. Uh, not the best uh, PlayStation 1 games, but the ones that are quite nostalgic for me. And after the Spectrum, I remember selling my Spectrum for various uh, reasons, mainly financial, and I sold my Spectrum and stuff. And I sort of came out of gaming for a while. But I remember sort of uh, either through people or TV or whatever, I started to get wind of the PlayStation 1. And I remember buying one fairly soon after it came out and i really got back into gaming again and uh, ps1 really got me back in and uh, anyway i'm going to do a video of the uh, games that really hit nost nostalgia for me you know so not the best games on the playstation one there's obviously loads of videos out there like that, but the games that really if i play them now they really take me back to that place when i first had a playstation one so i'm going to get cracking on that video going to sort of dig out my playstation one games and get playing and then i'll do some recording and uh, we'll do that video but anyway, look after yourselves in the meantime and get some good gaming in. And uh, yeah, look after yourselves, as I say. Yeah, Airwolf, eh? Tough game. Tough, tough game. Damn it.